Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video. Today we're going to be talking about what you should be working on while you're waiting for the Iceborne expansion to arrive. Of course, I'm sure you're aware that it's scheduled to release on September 6th. Ah, and that's actually less than two months away from now. Can you believe it? Wow, time flies when you're losing to the Extreme Behemoth again and again and again. All right, nice job everyone. Easy win, easy, easy. See, Extreme Behemoth isn't even hard. Anyways, with the massive expansion just around the corner, one of the questions I've been asking myself is, what exactly am I supposed to be doing until then? The reason I ask is because Monster Hunter is a very grindy kind of game, and I think most of us realized with the beta on the PlayStation 4 that our current armor and weapons are all going to be made obsolete pretty quickly after Iceborne drops. So assuming that's true, what can we work on that isn't going to be a waste of time? Number one. Beat story mode and do your optional quest. This is for players who just bought the base game, right? We'll have more, don't worry, we'll have more for players who have already done this. So you aren't going to be able to start the Iceborne story until you've finished with the story from the base game. I would go in and try to finish all of the story mode quests and all of the optional quests as well. Getting these out of the way now is going to take a lot of time if you just started. If you find yourself stuck on any of these quests, you might consider joining my Discord server, asking players in the LFG channels for help, right? I just did a playthrough of the story myself when I bought the PlayStation 4. Some of the uh, quests were actually kind of challenging, but I had the advantage of having all these players I know who watch me and they're in the Discord, and I could just go, hey, come help me play. So you should join the Discord. If you get stuck on the story, just let us know, hey, tell me personally, Maybe I'll come and help you fight it in private. Number two, make it to Hunter rank 50 and unlock augmentations. After story mode is complete, your next job is to reach Hunter rank 50 so you can unlock the end game monsters as well as augmentations. Basically, you just kind of grind monsters for a while, your Hunter rank goes up, and then you're going to be given like an extra story mode quest. Go finish that quest and it unlocks, you know, like a new ability to rank up your Hunter rank. As I mentioned before, one of the problems with Iceborne being so close is that we're anticipating the Gamma Armor sets to be made obsolete by the new Master Rank Armor sets. But we don't actually know how true that is. There might actually be a tough early game boss that you can defeat better if you have the best Gamma Armor from the base game. Also, for those who have no idea what an augmentation is or why they matter, go have a look at my augmentation guide, which you can do by clicking up here. So augmentations are basically a way to make your weapon more powerful. Of course, augmentations are very likely going to return in Iceborne, and this is why you want your character to be able to augment your weapons. Number three, unlock all of the mantles and boosters. If you need help unlocking any of the gear, I do have a mantle guide you can use to try and track down anything you're missing. I do talk about how to unlock the affinity booster as well in that video. We know in Iceborne that the mantles are going to be rebalanced by offering the ability to hold decorations, which are going to be active while you're wearing that mantle. Okay, so that's new for Iceborne. The developers said they specifically added that to try and balance out, you know, they said some mantles were overused, duh, the temporal mantle, right? And then you have some mantles that aren't overused, maybe like the glider mantle. And the glider mantle is now gonna have some decoration slots. You can add something like peak performance, agitator, whatever it is you're going to add there, and this is going to make the mantle stronger. Well, what that means is you're probably going to want to have all of the mantles unlocked, uh, not to mention the health booster is amazing now. That's already unlocked, but also the affinity booster might be considered, right? You might want the affinity booster. So you're going to want all the gear unlocked for when Monster Hunter World Iceborne drops, and then you're going to be able to say, you know, uh, here's the new mantle balance, and these are the mantles I want to use. These are, these are the mantles I don't want to use anymore. For example, could turn out temporal mantle has no decoration slots, Whereas maybe the Bandit Mantle holds like four medium decoration slots, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how Capcom finalizes their balancing for the new gear, as well as the boosters like Affinity Booster. When it, when it comes out, we'll know. Number four, collect all of the Palico gear. Believe it or not, I spent like 2,000 hours in the game before unlocking all of the Palico gear on my Xbox version of the game. And then on my new PlayStation account, all I have is the Vigor Wasp spray. I know I'm terrible. The Palico gear is going to be especially important when Iceborne launches because they've all been buffed with an upgraded version of their abilities. Vigor Wasp spray, as you know, gives a revive. Shield Spire, we just found out, has some kind of new scarecrow thing. Amazing. Mialatov cocktail has some kind of like firework, multi-hit explosive, and we're still waiting to learn more about the Plunder Blade and the Coral Orchestra. You might, you know, depending on when you watch this video, you might know at this point what they do, but I'm sure the point is that they're important, and when Iceborne comes out, you're going to want to have them already unlocked. 
Number five, finish collecting all the decorations. So this is a big one. On the Xbox, I think it took me about 2,300 hours to collect all the decorations. Of course, you're aware decorations are added to your armor to give your character its skills, right? Like weakness exploit, that's for affinity, critical boost, that's for damage. My guess is that all of the decorations are going to carry right over to Iceborne. And they'll simply add, you know, Capcom's going to add like a group of new skills that we're going to be farming for. And these are going to be added to the existing skills that we, maybe you've already got those unlocked. What this means is you should be playing the base game just to get your decoration loadout up to speed, especially if you want to have fully optimized builds that you can use against the very likely difficult monsters that we're going to be seeing in Iceborne. We're probably also going to discover that the charms still matter. So you may need to go out and fight monsters just to finish building up your collection of good charms, right? Like Handicraft 3. Somebody tell me Handicraft 3 isn't still going to be meta in Iceborne 3. I'll be surprised. It's possible, but I'll be surprised if it changes. Number six, should we be worrying about collecting more streamstones? Am I, I'm kind of mixed on this one. So my suspicion is that streamstones rarity 8 and rarity 7 for the weapons, right? Like hammer. Uh, I'm guessing these are going to become obsolete because I bet you that the new armor and the new weapons are going to be like Rarity 9, Rarity 10, Rarity 11. And if that happens, there's probably going to be a new Rarity 9 Streamstone, Rarity 10 Streamstone, and Rarity 11 Streamstone. So it's, it's mixed because we don't know. Maybe like the Gleaming Streamstones will still be important. Who knows? Uh, here's the deal though. If you are farming for those decorations, like I just said you should, you're probably gonna pick up a lot of streamstones on the way uh, anyways. So I wouldn't worry too much about streamstones. We'll find out more about them when Iceborne launches. Number seven, what about Kulv Taroth weapons? Sadly, I'm pretty sure in no time at all, the new Iceborne weapons will make my entire collection of Kulv Taroth weapons obsolete. So the hundreds of hours I spent farming Kulv Taroth will be completely meaningless. Thank you very much, Capcom. When the uh, festivals begin on July 25th, right, there's going to be five festivals between uh, now and the launch of Ice Iceborne. I probably wouldn't focus too much of my time on Kulv Taroth unless you're farming Zenny. Kulv Taroth is still the best way to earn Zenny if you need more Zenny. Number eight, how important are the end game fights really? The end game fights are all of the Arch Tempered Monsters, Ancient Leshen, and Extreme Behemoth. I think one of the questions a lot of us have is if Master Rank will make it easier to kind of power up with the new skills, the new armor, the new weapons, and then to just kind of go back and totally crush the Arch Tempered fights and be able to just defeat these monsters because now our gear is OP. My suspicion is that there is a chance these monsters still put up a good fight after the Iceborne release. And if you're just looking for something to do, all these monsters do also offer a layered armor set. So if you want to finish out your wardrobe, now would probably be a good time to do that. I'll be helping players defeat the end game fights all the way up to the release of Iceborne. So be sure to keep an eye out for one of my live streams where you can actually join and play live with me. I think you could wait to get these quests done and they will be easier after the release of Iceborne to answer the question, yeah, they probably will get easier. On the other hand, they're also good practice before Iceborne actually comes out, and we know Iceborne is supposed to be more difficult than the base game, so get your practice now. Number nine, work on your item loadouts. One of the things I'm sure will carry over into Iceborne are the items. Max potions, demon drugs, dash juice, Farcasters, stuff like that is always going to be relevant in this game. So if you haven't stockpiled on honey and bitter bugs, now's probably the time to get that done. I have an item loadout guide that my viewers have really loved. You might enjoy watching that if you haven't already seen it. I actually have more to talk about on the subject of items in this game, but I will be saving that for another video. Number 10, go out and collect all of the layered armors. I know I already mentioned layered armors for the end game fights, you know, like the arch tempered monsters, but there's actually a lot of layered armors that come from different activities. For example, you have arena fight layered armors and festival layered armors as well. The festivals will bring back a lot of limited time event quests that reward special layered armors. And the festivals themselves have seasonal layered armors that you unlock by finishing your daily quests. So if you don't want to have to wait like a year to get a particular uh, festival armor, like winter festival armor, uh, go do it now. You don't want to miss out on that, okay? This is your opportunity to do it. That's the whole point of these festivals. 
Number 11, this is another big one in my opinion, kind of like the decorations. So get your Golden Wyverian Prince. Gold Wyverian Prince can be earned each week by finishing the weekly limited bounties. During the five week festivals, there should actually be a lot of opportunities to earn these because they're, they're going to be available. The way it works in the festivals, they're like available for a day, but then there's going to be multiple days where you can unlock these Gold Wyverian prints. So the way it currently works when there's no festival, you can earn one Gold Wyverian print per week. During the festival though, you might be able to earn two a week or three a week. So it's a really great time to build up your Gold Wyverian prints. And of course, the reason we care about these so much is because you can actually take these to the Elder Melder and trade them for gems. And that could be a huge time saver when it comes to grinding monsters, uh, monster gems later in Iceborne. So really you do want your golden Wyverian prints and save them up because there's going to be new monsters with new gems that you don't have, right? You might have a thousand Nergigante gems or a thousand, uh, I don't know, Lunastra gems at this point because Lunastra gems aren't that big of a deal. Uh, but you might have a thousand of those. Well, you don't have a thousand Beotodus gems. Get your golden Wyverian prints before Iceborne comes out. Number 12, finish unlocking your canteen ingredients. This is another thing I'm guilty of not really working too hard on myself. Canteen ingredients elude me, it seems, but honestly, I think one of the reasons I never finish unlocking these is because I'm always playing in a session live and the ingredients are shared in a session, so I never really feel like I need to unlock those ingredients, right? But that's just me. It's possible that in Iceborne, we're getting new ingredients for the Grand Meowster. We don't actually know. I'm pretty sure, though, I saw an animation for the Meowscular Chef in the new Gathering Hub, right? They just showed off the new gathering hub. Pretty sure that was the Meowscular Chef. So it's very possible that the base game ingredients are still going to be used even after the launch of Iceborne. And having these ingredients already unlocked will give you more fresh ingredients when you sit down to make a meal, right? That's how it works. When you have lots of ingredients, your odds for uh, fresh ingredients goes up. So that's why you want to unlock these. All right, and it feels like we've been going on for a while. So why don't we wrap things up here? Number 13, go and solo the Extreme Behemoth and the Ancient Leshen. In your mind, you probably think that you're done playing Monster Hunter World because you've simply completed all of the available quests. But deep down inside, you know you have not become a true Apex Predator until you've done the most difficult things you can do in the base game. So if you're really done with all the other things I've mentioned in this list, then I challenge you to go out and solo the Extreme Behemoth without Cluster Bombs, Cluster Bombs are cheating, as well as soloing the Ancient Leshen, which can be tricky in his own way. He's got like a grab, and the grab, no one's there to free you, and he has this massive health pool, and all the doggies, all the jaggies. I'll throw in that you should also consider competing to break a record in the arena, or you could record yourself breaking a world record speedrun time, really on any fight or quest you want. Speedrunning and soloing the toughest monsters is the true end game in Monster Hunter, so if you haven't done this, then you're still missing out on a pretty satisfying aspect of the game. And by the way, if you're in my Discord server and you defeat the Extreme Behemoth solo, be sure to record it and show it to us in the Discord server. There is a special Extreme role that you can unlock by defeating the Extreme Behemoth solo. On a last note, if you found that one or more of the goals in this list was motivating for you to go out and play Monster Hunter World, consider leaving a like or sharing the video so that others can find it and feel inspired to go play it as well. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.